In hockey games, there are big fights, big hits, and lots of trash talks. But do you know that the fans are not left out in these fights? This is NHL fans versus NHL players. You're never gonna make it, you're not good enough There's a million other people with the same stuff You really think you're different, man, you must be kidding Think you're gonna hit it, but you just don't get it It's impossible, it's not probable, you're irresponsible Too many obstacles, you gotta stop it, yo, you gotta take it The Stanley Cup playoffs can sometimes bring the worst out of players and fans alike Such was the case on during the Toronto Maple Leafs 7-2 thrashing of the Tampa Bay Lightning Midway through Toronto's blowout, a Leafs fan, nice enough to wear yellow to stand out, got into a shouting match with lightning forward Tanner Jeannot. The fan attempted to climb the penalty box glass as the confrontation intensified. Soon after, security ejected the fan from the arena. This incident isn't the first time the Maple Leafs have found themselves involved in a situation involving a fan, the penalty box, and aggression. In 2001, the roles reversed when Ty Domi fought off a Philadelphia Flyers fan, who busted through the glass and into the sin bin after the notorious Maple Leafs tough guy. As for the last occurrence, Toronto exploded for six goals over the first two periods, running away with things early. I feel this is similar to every other sport. But you can't blame them. They are doing this for the love they have for the players. Some of them seize these players as gods. So don't blame them. The fight between fans and the players did not end here as we have more to unravel. Could you believe that Ference gave a fan the middle finger? The Boston Bruins rallied for a 5-4 overtime win in Montreal, but there's more to talk about. With the Canadians leading 3-1 in the second period, Andrew Ference hammered a shot past Habs goaltender Carey Price to close the gap to 3-2. Ference then skated past the face-off circle and approached the glass with his stick in his right hand. Then, with his left hand, the Bruins defenseman raised his middle finger in the direction of the Canadiens fans sitting in the lower section behind the glass. But why did he do that to someone who has done absolutely nothing to him? Now the gossip is about to get started. Let's get into some throwbacks just to show us that the fans and players fight is not new in the league. The Boston Bruins enter the stands. This is the one everyone knows. On December 23rd, 1979, numerous members of the Bruins entered the stands at Madison Square Garden while facing off against the New York Rangers. The Bruins climbed into the stands after a fan by the name of Jonathan Captain had hit Bruins forward. Stan Jonathan in the head with a program before stealing his stick. The enraged Bruins squad proceeded to climb the glass, with Terry O'Reilly being the first Bruin to reach Captain. The longest lasting image of the incident, though, has to be Mike Milbury hitting Captain with his own shoe. The incident wouldn't go over without punishments for the Bruins, as the NHL handed down numerous fines and suspensions. Ty Domi versus a Flyers fan. Domi was afraid of nobody. He squared off the toughest guys the sport has ever had, including the likes of Bob Probert, Rob Ray, Marty McSorley, and George Larocque without fear. The names on that fight card also include a Philadelphia Flyers fan who bit off a bit more than he could chew. On March 21st, 2001, while serving a penalty during a Maple Leafs Flyers game in Philadelphia, Domi responded to fans throwing things at him in the penalty box by squirting his water bottle into the crowd behind him. The water spray resulted in Flyers fan Chris Falcone charging down from his seat to the penalty box glass area to take a swipe at Domi. Falcone's continued pressing against the glass caused it to break, and it resulted in him tumbling into the box. This incident actually has a humorous ending as Domi and Falcone made amends after this. Domi even gave Falcone and his family tickets to playoff games in Toronto. Sasha Lakovic defends his coach. The Battle of Alberta is almost always filled with drama. But on November 23, 1996, that drama saw members of the Flames throwing punches at an Edmonton fan. During a stoppage in play, a fan leaned over the glass and proceeded to dump a beer on the head of Flames assistant coach Guy Lapointe. 
The gesture saw Lapointe punch the fan, and Sasha Lakovich would skate over to help his bench boss. The incident was the climax of a night that saw Oilers fans heckling the Flames bench to the point that local police had to be called to try and restore order. Lakovich would receive a two-game suspension, while the fan was banned from the Coliseum for life. Rob Ray fights a fan. Standing in front of Rob Ray was a daunting task for anyone. But on April 29th, 1992, a fan had the chance to experience what some of the game's top enforcers felt. Acting on a bet during a Buffalo Sabres Quebec Nordiques game at the now closed Colisee Pepsi, a fan jumped over the glass and into the Sabres bench. That proved to be one of the biggest mistakes any spectator could make. The man would be hit with over a dozen bunches from Ray before police officers could get into the ice to de escalate the problem. The Sabres and Enforcer would escape criminal charges, but the most impressive aspect of the whole ordeal was that the fan amazingly stood upright for the full barrage of right hands from the man known as Razor. Ron Esselstein gets physical. An NHL official most likely never goes into a game thinking he'll have to deliver a body check to anyone on the ice. But that's exactly what happened to Ron Esselstein in a game. During a Boston Bruins Winnipeg Jets game at the Boston Garden in 1989, a fan scaled the glass and ran onto the ice, making a beeline for referee Bill McCreary. Thinking fast, the 6'2", 225-pound Asselstein skated over to the fan and delivered a textbook check with his shoulder that sent the fan tumbling into the boards behind the Jets net. The fan in question was identified as Frank Burrow, and apparently, he wanted to talk to McCreary about a call in the game that he had supposedly missed. With Asselstein working that game, he made sure that Mr. Burrow would not have a chance to hold that conversation. In the fast-paced world of the NHL, the dynamic interplay between players and fans creates a tapestry of passion, emotion, and shared experiences. As we explored the unique roles of NHL players and fans, Fans, it became evident that they are not merely separate entities, but integral parts of a symbiotic relationship. The players, with their skill and dedication, fuel the flames of fandom, while the fans, with their unwavering support, breathe life into the game. Together, they form the heartbeat of the NHL, a pulsating rhythm that resonates in arenas and homes across the globe. In the end, whether donning the jersey or cheering from the stands, both players and fans contribute to the enduring legacy of the sport, weaving a narrative that transcends individual achievements and victories. It is this shared love for the game that binds them together, creating a timeless bond that ensures the NHL remains not just a game, but a cultural phenomenon that unites people in the pursuit of a common passion. In the arena of the NHL, where skill meets fandom, the journey is not just a about goals scored or cheers echoed, it's a collective odyssey of shared dreams and unwavering loyalty. As we conclude our exploration of NHL players and fans, it's clear that the heart of the sport beats strongest when players and fans unite in their passion for hockey. Let this celebration of the bond between those on the ice and those in the stands inspire us to carry the spirit of teamwork, resilience, and love for the game into our daily lives. Whether you lace up your skates or proudly wear your team colors, remember that in the world of the NHL, we're all part of a larger family connected by a shared love for the greatest game on ice. Let's continue to write the story of hockey together, on and off the rink, for generations to come.